Welcome to Impact Makers Radio, featuring industry thought leaders sharing problem-solving insights to help grow your business and live the life you love. And here's your host, Stuart Andrew Alexander. Hi, and welcome to another Let's Talk Bankruptcy Conversation. And during this segment of the show, ladies and gentlemen, I have bankruptcy attorney John Harbin, founder of the law offices of John A. Harbin from San Diego, California. Now, John, who is considered to be a leader in the area of tax and bankruptcy, will be talking to you today about how to discharge federal and state taxes in bankruptcy. Now, that sounds like a very important topic, so I can't wait to bring him on. So if you are one of the many individuals and business persons who are suffering from tax obligations in the San Diego, California area, you might just want to take a break, down tools, maybe even log out of Facebook or Twitter or stop doing anything else which may cause a distraction, grab yourself a notepad and pen and get ready to listen in to what John has to share with us today. With that said, let's bring him onto the show. Welcome, John. Are you there? I am. Fantastic. Thank you for taking the time out of your busy day to come and speak with us, John. So, John, first question for today, briefly, in your own words, can you share what kinds of people you serve and the various types of situations they find themselves in when they come to you for your help. Yes, thank you, Stuart, and thank you for uh, allowing me the time to talk to individuals who are, and small business persons who have had business setbacks, who are suffering from personal financial troubles, maybe they've gone through a divorce, they've been audited, and they're under siege from federal and state taxing agencies. Their wages have been garnished. Their bank accounts have been levied. Their businesses have been threatened with seizure. They may have had a visit from a revenue officer. They've received threatening notices from the taxing agencies. And for those persons, I'd like them to understand that bankruptcy is an option. And there's certain types of bankruptcies. The one we'll focus on today is Chapter 7 which is the most common type of bankruptcy. And for those persons who have taxes that are more than three years old, or they've been assessed more than 240 days, then they have bankruptcy as an option to discharge those taxes in bankruptcy. Fantastic. So then, John, it goes without saying that anything you share with us today is not legal advice or legal assistance. It's purely information. Now, I'm sure in the many years that you've been working in your field, you come across yeah many misconceptions. People come to you for your help and they have preconceived notions of what they believe to be true. Maybe they've heard it from family or friends or colleagues, or maybe they've done some research online and believed that what they found to be the correct information. However, you know otherwise. So, John, with that said, could you just share what's the most common misconception that you come across while you're out there helping your clients on a day-to-day basis? Well, there's a a couple uh, of misconceptions, uh, Stuart. Uh, I filed over 500 bankruptcies over 25 years in in practice here in California, and almost all of them have been tax-motivated. And in 2005, the bankruptcy laws significantly changed, and what was created at that time was a means test. And in California, uh, for a single person, that's any person making more than $52,416 a year. For a married couple, over $70,245. Not a very significant threshold. But for persons where more than 50% of their debt is taxes, the means test is not applicable. So for those persons who are making more than those thresholds, they still are eligible to file in a Chapter 7 liquidation and discharge their taxes in bankruptcy. But a second misconception uh, for taxpayers, 
and debtors is that a discharge of taxes does not necessarily affect a tax lien in bankruptcy. For instance, when a person files a tax return or they're audited, if the, if the taxing agent sees that they have some assets, they'll usually file a tax lien and record that in the county in which they reside. Now, debtors who have exempt assets in bankruptcy, a homestead, for instance, on their personal residence in California, that's $75,000 for a single person and $150,000 for a married person. Also, retirement accounts. Uh, those are exempt assets in a bankruptcy. And so a trustee cannot sell your home if you have uh, less than $150,000 in equity for a married couple. They cannot seize your retirement accounts uh, and sell those to creditors. Those are exempt assets in bankruptcy. But a, t a person could go through bankruptcy, get their discharge, meet all the rules for discharge of taxes and bankruptcy, and still be fighting with the taxing agency over the value of the tax lien. I had one case where the debtor was mired in tax court litigation, spending thousands of dollars unnecessarily in legal fees when the taxes involved, involving millions of dollars, were completely dischargeable in bankruptcy. I advised the debtor that he should file a Chapter 7 bankruptcy, and that debtor had some exempt and some non-exempt assets. We resolved the issue in settlement with the bankruptcy trustee regarding the non-exempt assets, and we resolved the issue after discharge in settlement with the IRS regarding the exempt assets. So that is uh, one of the main misconceptions for debtors, is that a discharge doesn't necessarily end the case that they have some assets and there's a tax lien uh, filed against them. Thank you for sharing that with us, John, and especially for sharing um, yeah, a case study, a very short case study of how you've actually helped somebody who came to you with that common misconception. So just as a reminder then, John, today's topic is how to discharge federal and state taxes in bankruptcy. Now, with that in mind, and for those individuals and business persons who are suffering from tax obligations, and they're out there wanting to know more, John, what's the most common but unknown pitfall that they need to keep in mind, they definitely need to be aware of, no matter what kind of situation they find themselves in? Well, I believe the public is unaware that failure to file tax returns does affect their rights to discharge taxes ultimately in bankruptcy. There are exceptions to bankruptcy discharge for taxes, and one of them is the so-called two-year rule. Individuals and businesses need to file tax returns more than two years before those taxes are capable of discharge and bankruptcy. Okay, so John, I think you mentioned earlier that you've um, had at least five, you've helped um, or worked on at least 500 bankruptcy cases within the California area. Could you just briefly share with me, how many years have you actually been a um, tax and bankruptcy attorney? I've been an attorney for over 25 years, Stuart, here in California. Right. Prior to that, I was a uh, certified public accountant for Ernst & Young and also with the IRS. I was a uh, revenue agent and international examiner with the IRS for nine years. So I have over 31 years of experience in the tax bankruptcy field. Okay, so even after 31 years then, John, if you can just think about any given morning of the week when your alarm clock goes off and you have another full day ahead helping the people who you help the most, is this something that you still feel motivated to, to do, John? Is it something that you still enjoy? I, I I do enjoy it, Stuart. I'm I'm good at what I do, and I am able to help many people uh, who've been suffering many times for for decades with these tax issues hanging over their head. I've had clients and uh, who've been dealing with 
uh, pack shelters that failed in the 80s. And it took them, in some cases, as long as 20 years to resolve the issue. When they finally came to me, I was able to give them some peace of mind finally. Uh, when I showed them that bankruptcy was an option in many cases. Okay, so this is some very important work that you're doing out there. You're certainly having a positive impact on people's lives in, yeah, what I can only describe as um, times in, in times of personal crisis. So, with that said, then, John, and I'm sure for the listener out there, they at this stage they're wanting to know a little bit more about you in terms of your background and especially in terms of your formal education and your experience as it relates to the topic of tax and bankruptcy law. So could you just share or or just share a few moments just to um, impart some information about yourself, your background, your formal education, so that the listener can get to know you a little bit better. Thank you, John. Certainly, Stuart. I, uh, took uh, uh, accounting classes in my undergraduate um, uh, years at the University of San, San Francisco, was able to pass the CPA exam from those classes, uh, went ahead and uh, secured a law degree from Loyola of Los Angeles, uh, passed the California bar in 1992, and began practicing law with former IRS tax counsel in Los Angeles, learned the trade of tax procedure litigation and litigating taxes in the bankruptcy courts uh, in the uh, Los, greater Los Angeles area, and uh, relocated to San Diego about four years ago and have continued to practice throughout Southern California in the tax and controversy and tax bankruptcy field. Excellent. So, John, I'd just like you to picture the kinds of individuals and business person who are suffering from tax obligations. And, yeah, they're thinking about coming to you for a consultation. They're listening to the show right now. They're, they're wanting to know more about our topic today of discharging federal and state taxes in bankruptcy. Now, with that picture in mind, John, what would be your final thoughts that you'd like to leave with them before we move on to our last question for today? Well, I'd like them to know that bankruptcy is a viable option for debtors with tax problems. They don't have to have a concern regarding the means test. There's no requirement for a large lump sum payment and a five-year probation period that's required in an offer and compromise. Now, there are certain taxes that you cannot discharge in bankruptcy if there's been fraud, if there's a trust fund liability, for instance, payroll taxes withheld by an employer from the employee and not paid over to the government. Those would not be eligible for discharge in bankruptcy, and and the debtors would have to look to the offer and compromise as a likely uh, means of resolving those tax issues. But for other taxes, in particular income and Social Security taxes, bankruptcy is a viable option for debtors with tax problems. So, John, if there is somebody out there listening to you right now and they want to know more about discharging federal and state taxes in bankruptcy, where would they find you? How would they be able to get in touch with you, John? Well, they can find me on my website, www dot john harbin tax law dot com or by email at john harbin tax law at verizon dot net my office phone six one nine four three seven four three seven seven okay thank you for sharing so generously with us today john you certainly have demonstrated in the short amount of time that we've had today that you are a true educator, advocate, and trustworthy advisor for your client success. So thank you for your time today, John. Thank you, Stuart. You are so welcome. And more importantly, I'd like to say a big thank you to the listeners. Without any listeners, we would have nobody to speak to. So a big thank you to you for joining us on this very insightful and informative discussion with one of the leading bankruptcy attorneys in the San Diego, California area today. 
again his name was john harbin don't forget his name make sure you do check him out give him a call send him an email i am absolutely sure you're going to be in good hands so that's it for today ladies and gentlemen again my name is stuart andrew alexander and we'll be back shortly with some more leading bankruptcy professionals in this our series of let's talk bankruptcy conversations so until then take care Have a great day and we'll talk real soon. Thank you for tuning in to Impact Makers Radio. To listen to all past, present and future industry thought leaders and trendsetters, visit us at impactmakersradio.com.